Hello and welcome to a new episode of The Pen Nook. In today's video, we're going to be discussing what makes for a great work pen in my opinion. I have spotted four different traits that these pens share and I'm going to be explaining them one by one and then I'm going to be showing you the one fountain pen I use at work every day. So the first characteristic of a good fountain pen for work, in my opinion, is low maintenance. You want something that you don't have to carry around your whole cleaning supplies. Bottle of ink, syringe, you need running water, maybe you have an eyedropper or like some type of piston that makes a mess. Some are perfectly fine, but I think nothing beats the practicality and just how simple it is to have a cartridge-fed pen. For example, something like a Lamy Safari, Lamy LX, Lamy All-Star. They're just super reliable fountain pens, very durable. They're not affected by um, ink drying out or having crusty nibs and stuff like that. And they also are very easy to refill with something like your Lamy T10 cartridge. So even though I prefer to use bottle inked and a syringe to refill my old cartridges, I always carry a small pack of brand new Lamy cartridges in my work bag whenever I bring one of these to work. And it makes for a very easy re-inking process, uh, no matter if I'm at the office, on the road, whatsoever. The second trait of a good work pen, in my opinion, is a low mess um, potential. <laughs> so this is where something like the Lamy Safari is not a good option. Because if you notice, Ben, well, you know there's a big ink window here to look at the ink level in the cartridge. This window is actually just a hole, so it goes directly through a cartridge. So whenever you have a leak, uh, either in your cartridge or most likely around your cartridge, well, ink is uh, likely to leak out into either your pocket, your bag, your pen pouch, and make quite a big mess. So if, um, like me, you like to have a low risk of um, ink spill, let's say at work, I would not recommend something like the Safari or LX or All Star. Rather, I would choose something more along the lines of a, for example, Caveco Sport. This is the Caveco Ale Sport in red. So it's anodized uh, in red, but it's an aluminum pen. And you see there's no ink window here, meaning that even if there's a leak in either the cartridge or the seal around the cartridge, uh, the ink is just going to accumulate in the body of the pen, which is of course not great on a metal pen, but it's not that bad compared to having a big mess. You can simply clean up your pen and you're going to be fine. So something like a Caveco Oil Sport is a good option if you want a low risk of um, mess, because also the cap is a screw-on cap, which is also more secure in my experience as far as um, oil spills go. Plus, there's a nice little bonus since this pen um, posts very nicely and having a pen that posts might be a big pro depending on where you work at. In my situation, I sometimes take notes on the go or while standing, so having a pen that posts uh, is quite practical. It's one less thing to worry about, one less piece to lose or damage. So this is for the um, low risk of the ink spill. I would like to note here that some people like to convert their plastic Caveco sports into eyedroppers. Although very interesting as far as ink capacity goes, it might not be the best strategy for preventing ink mess. So just for, in case you don't know, eye dropping a pen means that instead of using the cartridge, you actually fill the whole body of the pen with ink. So you have like, basically you turn the body of the pen into a cartridge. So you have a gigantic ink capacity. The thing is, if you're, if there's a leak, between the, the grip and the body, well, there's a ton of ink leaking, right? So of course this is uh, not recommended on metal pens, no matter if they're steel, brass, or aluminum, but on plastic pens, it can be done, um, given you put a bit of silicone grease on the threads to reduce the risks of leak. Again, a bit risky, I wouldn't do it uh, in my case. The third trait of a good work fountain pen is a reasonable cost. So. Reasonable means different things for different people. Uh, maybe for you, something like a Pelican, uh, I don't know, M800 is reasonable. In my case, I like to keep the cost all the way uh, as low as possible. So something like the uh, Caveco AL Sport is right, right around $80. And that's a bit much for me in my work environment. And this is just because there's a ton of people around you. Be, uh, like they can be coworkers, clients, suppliers, 
and they don't really know about fountain pens most of the time so whenever they see a pen laying around they have a quick note to take they might just take it and without any bad inten intentions there's a risk of damage there this is why i like to keep the pens i bring to work uh, quite on the affordable side of things something like a lamb safari around 30 dollars is a good option but if you want to go really on the lowest uh, possible budget look up the uh Jinhao 911. This is an all steel uh, outer case cap um, and body, plus it has a hooded nib and it writes quite smoothly. It uses a cartridge converter of the piston type. And yes, it is kind of a ripoff of a Parker design. So like, that's it. And like I said, these are very, very cheap. It's like $3 for one of these, hard to beat. I mean, this is the same price as a ballpoint basically. So if ever you lose it or if somebody steals it, it is not the end of the world. If you want to go really budget, look at Genhao. And there's great offerings also uh, from the side of uh, Lamy, Caveco, even Twisby on some Twisby Go or Twisby Eco. They're still on a reasonable side of things. The fourth and last trait of a good fountain pen for work, in my opinion, is the durability of the pen. It doesn't have to be super durable. It just has to be adapted to your workspace. If you do 100% office work, like for example in HR or as a lawyer or something like that, uh, maybe your pen is not really exposed to any dangerous elements. So you can have whatever pen you want. It can be a more fragile pen like a Custom 74 and it's not, no big deal. On the other hand, if you work in a more rugged environment like outside in the cold or the heat or in an industrial setting when there's uh, concrete floors everywhere, maybe solvents, greases, and stuff like that, I would go with a metal pen. So even heavy duty plastic pens, for example, made out of polycarbonate, are quite sensitive to some solvents and strong cleaning agents, uh, and they can cause premature aging of the plastic, they become brittle and more easy to break. Same goes for solvents, they can simply dissolve sometimes the plastics. And um, so really, in my opinion, there's no substitution for just metal. It can be brass, aluminum, stainless steel, in general, they're much more resistant to uh, temperature variation. So if your metal pen is melting, you have bigger issues than your pen melting. But if you leave your Lamy Safari in a windshield in summer, uh, when it's super hot, it might actually melt. It might actually deform. It won't happen with a metal pen. Same for extreme cold. In general, they don't become that brittle compared to plastic ones. And plus, in general, if you have a stainless steel pen or just a metal pen with some type of protective coating, like some galvanization or anodization, they tend to be quite resistant to oxidation and other chemical attacks. This is why something uh, out of metal might be your best option if you're working in a harsh environment. But again, it might not be your case. So just take that into consideration when, you, when choosing your fountain pen for work and uh, do a choice that is appropriate with the uh, environment you're gonna be working with or you might regret it and damage your pen. So finally, here is when I reveal my personal choice as far as the perfect work fountain pen in my situation. And you're gonna see it follows the four guidelines we just discussed. And so the pen in question is the Lamy CP1. I've had this pen for a bit over a year. And since then I used it every single day at work and it held up superbly. And this is why I want to share with me, share my discoveries with you. So, first of all, let's talk about low maintenance. Well, like I said, this pen uses a, your typical Lamy nib. So just a Lamy stainless, uh, yeah, stainless steel nib, exchangeable. So you can swap it with other Lamy pens that use the same nib. Like for example, the Lamy Safari. It uses a very common uh, feed and cartridge system. So again, the Lamy T10 cartridge. So it's very easy to have cartridges available for refill on the go. And it's overall a very reliable writer in my opinion. It is not affected by heat, cold, uh, whatever. It is just super reliable and easy to maintain. The second point we discussed was mess free. Well, this fountain pen doesn't have any ink window. Plus it uses uh, cartridges or uh, piston converters. So it's uh, very well equipped to <laughs> keep the mess to a minimum. Yes, it has a snap cap, which is a bit less secure than a twist cap for ink uh, spills, but so far, no problem. 
I noticed this cap um, has a bit of suction to it. And this is why you can see there's some ink on the nib that gets drawn whenever I uncap it. But it seems to have gotten better over time as the um, cap loses a bit of its, of its sealing. Because keep in mind, I've been capping and uncapping this pen maybe 10 times a day for a year, okay? So it has had time to wear a bit, but it's still super solid, very secure, and it also posts securely, which is a big plus in my opinion. Like I said, when taking notes on walking or just on the go, standing. Plus it posts very securely, and because it's such a sleek pen, uh, it doesn't add too much weight to the back of the pen. So it's still very manageable. The third point we discussed was the cost. Well, this pen is right around $60, which is not cheap by any means, but is much more reasonable than other pens like your Lamy 2000, which is my uh, personal favorite fountain pen, which by the way was designed by the same designer. This is why you have the same design cues, same Bauhaus style, black, stainless steel. Okay, <laughs> that's just a quick little fun fact there. But yeah, very reasonable price compared to your Lamy 2000, your VP, your pilots, your sailors. So right around $60, uh, it won't hurt too much if ever you, uh, you lose it. Plus you have the bonus of being able to replace the nib if it ever gets damaged, like we discussed earlier by non-fountain pen people. And lastly, we discussed durability. Well, this pen has an all metal construction except of the grip, which is made out of ribbed plastic. You're gonna have a close up um, a bit later on. The body from what I could gather online is made out of brass with some type of lacquered coating on it. Uh, interestingly enough, when we unscrew it and we look in the insides of the pen, we can actually see some uh, gold reflections. And this is of course uh, not gold or gold plating. It's most likely a titanium nitride, which is a very hard coating they put on softer metals to uh, help with the durability. It is the same coating they put on some drill bits and other tools like that. So like I said, all metal. The clip is also metal, stainless steel, um, spring-loaded, has a protective lacquer over it, so quite resistant to chemical attacks um, from the outside. Yes, there's a plastic um, grip section here, but it's protected whenever the pen is closed. And one of the cool things is, despite being all metal, it's still quite light, because sometimes with um, solid metal pens, like for example, the Karas pens that are copper or brass, they get really heavy, just because copper and brass are so dense. But in this case, despite being out of metal, it's quite a thin pen, so the weight is still reasonable, meaning that whenever you carry it, uh, let's say above ground, so, in your hand or in your pocket while moving around, moving around there's still quite a low uh, potential energy, let's say. So whenever it falls, it tends to not damage itself too much compared to a heavier pen. If you drop a very heavy pen, nib first on a concrete floor, your nib is just over. In this case, eh, I'm not sure. I won't try it. What I do know is I have dropped this pen several times on concrete from around a meter and a half, and there is no visible damage to um, the lacquer on the pen, which to me says it's quite durable um, for a bit more rugged environments. Also all metal, no issue with the heat or the cold uh, as far as regular temperatures go. So that was it for today. Uh, we discussed what are the four main traits for a good work pen in my opinion. I presented you my favorite fountain pen for work. Like I said, I've used it every single day at work for over a year now. So if you like this video, you can like and subscribe for more videos. You can also look up our Instagram, link is in the description. If you're into fountain pens and would like to see some cool fountain pen pictures and content. So thank you for watching and see you next time on the Pen Nook.